Cleveland is the world's largest iron ore terminal, and the ore unloading docks are alive with activity during the shipping season on the Great Lakes, biting deep into the holds of the ore boats to furnish the raw material for the many steel plants along the shores of Lake Erie. There is no industry in this state of a myriad industries that does not have number one industry with a vast industrial area to keep supplied with this essential product. Huge blast furnaces must be constantly fed with just right proportions of iron ore, limestone and coke to meet the ever increasing demands for iron, the master metal. Iron appears to be as vital to modern civilization as air and water. The mammoth blast furnaces are the melting pots of all industry. For here are the embryo automobiles, nails, turbines, hairpins, and thousands of other products ready to be made available by Ohio's workmen. Torches pierce an opening in the side. Tapped and flowing, as thin as water, the molten stream has been changed from iron ore to iron and has taken its first big step in the process of becoming a part of the framework of civilization. The white-hot ribbon winds its well-charted course, much like a river on fire, to the next step in the process of manufacture, which is steel. The metal is transported to the open hearths in ladles, where the iron is refined into steel. Massive ladles pour the white-hot steel into molds. The metal emerges as ingots after it has solidified, and the molds have been stripped away. The pouring operation is one of the industry's most beautiful sights. The ingots are sent between the rollers of a blooming mill, which reduces their thickness. The hot metal rolls back and forth, getting thinner and longer with each rolling. The manufacturers of iron and steel could truthfully advertise the familiar slogan, untouched by human hands. This operation prepares the metal for further rolling in either the sheet or strip mill. The white hot steel begins the big squeeze by passing between a series of rolls which compresses it into thin strips to be used in the manufacture of all manner of things. Buildings, bridges, automobiles will soon emerge from this red hot strip steel, the master metal, the stuff of which the backbone of civilization is made. Coal is essential, for without heat from coal we would not have made the rapid strides that have become familiar to everyday life. There are two methods of mining coal in Ohio, strip and shaft mining. This scene is taken in a strip mine, where a vein of coal is relatively near the surface. Shovels are used to take off the overlying topsoil, exposing a vein of coal. This shovel is as high as a 10-story building, and a score of tons is taken with each bite, creating a veritable landslide when released. This shovel, made in Ohio, is one of the world's largest electrically powered excavating machines. Looking down the mine, 50 feet below the surrounding country, truly a large-scale operation. The big shovel clears to within one inch of the vein of coal, and the remaining dirt is scraped and swept off. Coal, the black corpuscles in the lifeblood of industry, is the largest single item in freight transportation over Ohio's many railroads. From coal comes the energy which is used to supply most of the electricity used in Ohio. On arriving at a modern steam electric power plant, each car of coal is switched into an electric car dumper, which turns the car upside down and spills the coal into conveyors. This equipment is used for speed and the assurance that an adequate supply of coal is available at all times. A veritable dust storm. The coal is ground in motor-driven mills until it is as fine as Milady's face powder. This pulverized coal is mixed with heated air and is blown into the burners of the furnaces. The mixture of coal powder and air burns like the gas on your kitchen stove. The steam generated in the boilers above the furnaces turns the wheels of the great turbines and generators. The electricity flows from the power plant to large transformers, where it is increased to 132,000 volts. And this high voltage reaches out over the length and breadth of Ohio in a network of copper nerves supplying industry and homes with electricity. Industrial Ohio depends chiefly upon four major essentials, steel, coal, power, and oil. Without any one of these, the entire structure would be useless. In these crude oil stills, the petroleum is separates many parts by means of vaporization and condensation. Processing is diversified and complex equipment is necessary to meet the lubrication problems in industry. 
for proper and efficient lubricating oils and greases are prime factors in the irresistible drive for speed. In these towers, the semi-refined oil is brought for more complete processing and separation into the lubricating oils that make the cheerful song of smooth running machinery heard throughout the realm of industrial Ohio. The utilization of petroleum and its products overshadows in importance the inventive labors of centuries. The speed with which petroleum technicians build up a body of scientific fact for the selection and application of industrial lubricants is a notable achievement. The advent of petroleum with its tremendous effect on machine design marked the starting point for the highly mechanized world of today. Over 400 separate and distinct products are manufactured from petroleum, from white wax to black asphalt, from the covering of mother's jelly glasses to the surfacing material for broad highways, all from crude oil. Both in tank cars and steel barrels, standard industrial oils, or smokestack oils as they are called by the trade, travel to industries all over Ohio. Proper lubrication reduces friction to a minimum and assures economical operation of every type of machinery used in thousands of Ohio industries. With the primary essentials, steel, coal, power, and petroleum products in mind, we are now ready for a glimpse into the kaleidoscope of industrial Ohio. Gasoline, diesel, steam and electric shovels for altering the face of the earth to conform to the ever-changing requirements of man. Shovels, cranes, drag lines and other related equipment moving heavy loads are usually associated with construction work. We have numerous industrial applications also. The cab goes into position and the shovel begins to take shape. The construction of equipment as large as this is an accomplishment requiring the coordination of many individuals. Working from drawings and blueprints, the many parts are cast, forged or machined and made ready for assembly into the completed product. Each shovel must be planned and constructed to do the particular type of work called for. Whether the shovel is drag line or scoop type is dependent upon the weight of the material to be lifted or the distance required to reach and deposit the load. Here shovels are put through their paces to prove their stamina and to see if they have what it takes to perform the hard work of biting into the earth and rock. The test yard makes an ideal vantage point for that ever absorbing pastime of a large group of individuals best known as excavation watchers. Located in northern Ohio near Amherst are the world's largest sandstone quarries gouging into the surface of the earth to a depth of over 200 feet. These large stair-step-like pits yield a very excellent grade of sandstone that is used for a variety of purposes. Berea grit is the geological name of this particular deposit of stone, deriving its name from the town of Berea, where sandstone was first discovered in Ohio in the year 1840. With crowbars, the blocks are pried loose and maneuvered into position for the crane to lift up and out to the surface, where they will be cut into desired shapes and sizes. Leaving its resting place of centuries upon centuries, the stone is now on its way to be used by man in the many needs he has found for this product. Buildings, curbing, flagstone, or the familiar grindstone. Ohio is the source of the major share of sandstone grindstones used throughout the United States. From the small ones to be found on every farm to the large ones used by industry, most of them are made in northern Ohio. By virtue of the excellent texture of the virgin sandstone, it is possible to chisel out intricate and beautiful carvings to be used for the ornamentation of buildings. Stone cutting is an old art, coming up through the ages without much change from the conventional mallet and chisel, but man has conceived machines to perform certain functions in preparing the unfinished stone for the market, and machines such as this aid in making buildings more inspiring. The ceramic industry is one of great antiquity. Some of the oldest relics of past civilizations have been the products of the potter's wheel. East Liverpool, Ohio is the pottery center of the world. Here raw clay mixed to exacting specifications is by means of modern machinery made into the most exquisite dinnerware. The jiggering machine is the modern prototype of the old potter's wheel. The raw clay and dye spin as the jigger shapes and presses it into the familiar form of a plate. The future resting place for waffles, bacon and eggs or a nice juicy steak. Cups are shaped in the same way. From a small handful of clay in the mold, the shaper distributes it evenly and smoothly. The excess clay is scraped off, and the cup has started its journey to be met at the other end by saucers and plates. 
To smooth off the rough edges, the cuts are turned on lathes by craftsmen who have changed somewhat the methods used by the earlier artisans, but in so doing have made quantity production possible. Quicker than you can say Jack Robinson, a handle is on the cup, smoothed off and touched up, ready for the next step in the many necessary to furnish the world with dishes. The rotary kill, where the fragile forms are placed ready for their first firing. This type of kill rotates very slowly to permit the heat to bake the clay. The finished pieces are taken off and from here will go through a glazing process. For purposes of distinction and beautification, a design is placed on the individual pieces to be matched later in complete sets. This is one of several methods used in placing designs on pottery. From the final firing, the trays emerge to form a never-ending stream from the pottery center of the world. Primitive man chiseled his thoughts on rock. Today we use paper. The pulp arrives at the mill in large rolls and is fed into beaters, where the fibers are separated by water and the beating action of the machine. Practically all papers are made principally or in part from wood pulp. The wet end of the machine, where a fine wire mesh holds the pulp and permits the water to drain off. The fibers interlock and settle to form a sheet or mat. This sheet becomes sufficiently strong to permit suction and pressure to extract the water, yet soft enough to be edge cut by a jet of water. Paper making is a continuous operation, and all the parts of these block-long machines must function properly. When the paper is partially dry, it leaves the wet end to start a journey of up, down, around, and between the drying rolls, a delicate job for so massive a machine. The modern paper machine is among the world's largest, and in probably no other machine are presented more trying tests for lubricating oil. At the dry end of the machine, the web of paper is spooled off onto large continuous rolls. By allowing the paper to slip over alternating rolls of pressed cotton and steel, there is produced a smooth velvet finish. This process is called calendaring. Throughout the industry, great care is taken to maintain high standards of quality. Each sheet is given a final inspection with eyes trained to spot flaws. From this caption, the paper is ready for the printing presses of the world to give the pleasing impressions of the printed page. Printing is perhaps the greatest achievement of the ingenuity of man. It's a long jump from the press of Gutenberg to the modern high-speed multicolor cylinder presses of today. But the fundamentals of the first printing press can be seen in its modern prototype. Printing is a large industry in Ohio, and the world's largest magazine publishing house is located in Springfield. Printing an issue of a publication with a national circulation is a big manufacturing job and a big shipping operation that must be timed accurately. Gathering machines assemble the magazines section by section as they travel hurriedly to completion. A continuous streams of magazines flow by, pausing momentarily to be stitched with wire to bind them tightly together. Seconds count when millions of copies are printed and handled in one print shop, and there must be no hitch in meeting publication dates. A coating of adhesive is applied to hold the cover securely to the body of the magazine. The covers automatically meet the magazines at just the right time and place. The claws release their grip, folding the cover as they go down. Counted into stacks of equal number, the magazines are ready for trimming in these giant cutters. Ingenious machines capable of finishing thousands of magazines in a day's time. Down go the knives and the sides, tops and the bottoms are cut and trimmed to uniform size ready for addressing and mailing. The addressing machine is a fast stepper. Over 13,000 magazines an hour receive their instructions to the postmen of the world for delivery to a public waiting for the fiction facts within their covers. The two great centers of the machine tool industry in Ohio are Cincinnati and Cleveland. This industry can best be classified as machines that make parts for other machines. One of the more intricate examples of this type is the automatic screw machine. Rugged yet precise are the parts that go into this type of industrial equipment. Rugged because of the high speeds and precise because the finished product must be accurate. In use it is almost uncanny in the ways in which it works for there seems to be an unlimited variety of products turned out by these automatics. Industrial oils for cooling and lubrication are used in large quantities. This combination has created in industry an ability to manufacture automobiles, radios, refrigerators, and many other machine-producible articles to supply our everyday necessities. Industrial Ohio is interdependent. 
Most industries have specialized in one type of product to supply other industries with that product. Spark plugs present a good example of this. The builders of motors throughout the world depend upon other manufacturers for essential parts of their product, but in so doing are able to manufacture better and more efficient equipment because each part has received the undivided attention of its producer. The process is reciprocal, for automatic screw machines are essential in manufacturing the steel base or shells of spark plugs. The electrode or terminal for the spark that ignites the gasoline in the compression chamber of the automotive engine goes into place. Each piece of material in a highly specialized product such as this is chosen for its efficiency in operation. The small punch press makes short work of the other terminal. All over industry's home, the factory, parts are being made for the finished product. At some point, you will always find them coming together for assembly, the fusion of the work of many hands. Each part is put in place, the core, the shell, the knurl, and the gasket, given a quick turn, and it is ready for tightening. A machine makes fast work of the job. Wrapped and ready for delivery to the automobiles of the world to ignite the gasoline to produce the power. Akron is the undisputed rubber center of the world. Literally thousands of different rubber products bear the familiar mark made in Akron. It is the tire center of the world supplying the largest share of tires for the millions of automobiles in the United States. Many other articles are manufactured in Akron. Rubber balls are made and decked out in gaudy colors to become the treasured possession of some youngster. Think of the bouncing and hard knocks these will get in a lifetime. Inflated toys, also for the general amusement of the younger generation, but the grown-ups too seem to enjoy these comic characters. Haven't you often wondered how hot water bottles were made? Many people are busily engaged in the manufacture of hot water bottles for the aches and pains of both young and old. By the process of vulcanization, the raw rubber is made durable, taking the shape of the mold during the curing. And now, to extricate the mold from the inside of this small neck bottle, a little preparation is necessary. The excess rubber is pulled off, a dash of steam to free the bottle from the mold, and then down and off. Modern industry converts one substance, wood pulp, into numerous common and uncommon products. It gives you from a tree not merely paper but artificial silk. Churning and mixing in this beater can be seen the raw material for the silk-like substance rayon. The pulp is aged and chemically treated in the preparatory process of forming threads. The spinning machines form the setting for an amazing chemical reaction where a dark orange fluid is changed to a white thread by passing through sulfuric acid. The cellulose xanthate in fluid form is forced through this small nozzle containing 60 minute holes, each of which will form a strand in the finished thread. Immerse it in sulfuric acid and you have thread. The chemical magicians have been at work here. Spools of thread on their journey which ends as a piece of cloth lacking all visible characteristics of the wood pulp from which it started. The strands of thread produced on the spinners are parallel and must be twisted for use in textile processes. The thread leaves a fast-turning spool to be wrapped onto a slow-turning spool above. The variation in the speed produces the twist in the thread. This dizzy speed dash is entirely dependent upon proper lubrication of all moving parts. Constantly turning and twisting, the spools line out in long rows, each spool holding over 18 miles of thread. Rayon knitting is also done on a large scale in Ohio. Rooms filled with these delicate and sensitive knitting machines hum busily with the clicking of the fast and accurately moving needles as they dart in and out, making the cloth. On close inspection, we see this highly perfected mechanism and its many coordinated parts that perform the amazing and difficult actions necessary in the knitting of finished cloth. Each part functions at the split second that its work is to be done, all terminating in the bolt of tubular cloth which will be made into hundreds of different articles of wearing apparel. Shoes for the many millions of feet that must be covered make a large industry, especially in the southern section of Ohio, centering principally in Portsmouth. From carefully selected leather, cutters carve out the various parts from patterns, adding part to part until a complete unit is assembled. Many things must be done in the shoe factory before the shoe is ready to wear. On industrial sewing machines, the lining is carefully fitted 
and held fast by strong threads as the needle goes in and out. Guided around the hairpin turns and down the straightaway to the finish line where it is trimmed and made ready for more work to be done. The lining and leather begin to resemble a finished shoe as it is formed by this machine over a last. When the adjustments are made and everything is centered, then the machine makes quick work of securely fastening the hole into a completed unit. The last stays with the shoe until it is finished. More sewing. This time it's the sole that is fastened to the upper part. The invention of the sewing machine by Elias Howe has been adapted to many industrial uses, yet the original principle has not been altered. The sharp needle cuts through the leather with the greatest of ease. It takes a lot of work to make practically everything. Many hands do their tasks. Yet upon completion, as we look at the finished product, it blends so skillfully that we seldom consider how it was made. Industrial Ohio is full of interesting material for those who desire to find out how things are made. Trimming and smoothing off the rough edges on high-speed cutters, adding the finishing touches so necessary to style and appearance. And another product from one of Ohio's many factories is ready for the markets of the world. One of the outstanding facts of our modern civilization is its reliance upon industry in almost all that concerns our daily needs. In thousands of Ohio industrial plants, we see the marvelous partnership of science and industry producing the prime necessities of life. This pictorial journey through a small part of industrial Ohio enables us to grasp more fully the wonders of this great state, outstanding in so many ways. With an abundance of the four major essentials, steel, coal, power and petroleum products, the wheels spin and hum to produce.